Hard to remember that, is it? No. Harry. Okay. I'm with Harry Hunter. We just completed the Marathon de Sable legendary in Morocco. Yesterday was the final stage. Um, you've done this kind of event many, many times. Yes. You broke the record this year as the oldest Brit to complete. Um, you ever. turned ever. Ever, in the 38th running of it. You turned 76 on one of the stage Monday, days. Monday, yeah. The second stage. How was the event for you? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was um, tough. They're all tough. There's no no easy, but it was great. Well organised. Um, great people. Amazing people. You always meet amazing people at these events. You know, comrade, the camaraderie, and and, and 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 the help from everybody, else, everybody around, and everybody with you. And uh, yeah, and I, I enjoyed it. I mean, a strange way. You come here, you put yourself through hell, but you, it, it, it's something inside you that really does. You, you love it, and that's what I've, that's how I've always approached these races. What is it about these kinds of races that gets you to? come back for more and more year after year um, well I've been told by my family and whatever that I'm addicted <laughs> uh, possibly a challenge I love the challenge I, I, I feel challenges you know my life I've always had challenges and that's what I like I want to be challenged I don't I don't want to just curl up somewhere I want to I want to be out there still challenging myself no matter how old I get so you just turned 76 a few days ago. Do you feel like the end of your ultra career is on the horizon or you think you've got several more years left? Well, I think I've got several more years left. I mean, physically, I'm in good order. Mentally, I'm in good order. Um, I mean, I've, I'm not sort of blow my own trumpet, but I help people round because I've got experience and I help people round who didn't have the experience and, and, and physically I, I can still keep going. And that's the thing. And I'm not stupid. I'm not going to be up the front. <laughs> if I am, they're going to have to do, they're going to have to check, check my blood levels. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I enjoy it. I love it. Can you tell us about some other m memorable ultras that you'd recommend to other people? Yeah, yeah, the one, the one that's my favourite is called the Kalahari Grabbers Extreme Marathon in South Africa. It's a great race. It's been going quite... In fact, the race was started when the, the, the guy that, that, that started the Kalahari Grabbers Extreme Marathon did this race. He was the first man ever. Uh, he's got a pathetic foot and he did it. He was the first man that ever completed this race with a prosthetic foot. And he came back to South Africa and he started the race. And the race is smaller than this in numbers, uh, but a great race, great people, well organized. And um, yeah, yeah, I'd recommend it 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about Comrades Marathon Ultra? Oh, oh Comrades is amazing as well. If you, if you wanted to, if you wanted to go, what I call a flying weekend to South Africa, the Comrades being the oldest ultra in the world, the first one, obviously, and uh, it, it, it's a different kind of thing. It's not a, a, a staged event. It's one hit, 89 kilometres, and it's it's colossal. It's amazing. But the atmosphere is unbelievable. And, and the whole build up to the race, yeah, it's worth doing. Now, when we're just at the bar, would you like a sip of your? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll open my drink too. So, as we were ordering the drinks at the bar just now, we got into the mental side of these events. And you mentioned about you want to be out of a thought because the thought can really drain away the energy from your body. Mm. Do you want to go into that a little bit more? Well, yes. I mean, <clears throat> anybody that comes to do these races, even the guys at the front, the, the, the elite guys, there's a lot of mental strength required. I think personally, this kind of running, this kind of event, it's 80% mental strength um, because you've got to overcome uh, what I call the pain and exhaustion and, and what you put what you're putting your body through and if your mind and your brain and your your mental strength is not with you then you're not going to complete it uh, and that's just I, I, I don't know anybody who will complete this race without having gone through 
a lot of mental sort of you know anguish and 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 really pushing them themselves through it because pain as we all know you know in your mind there's, there's a sort of like a a uh, trip, illusion. Like illusion, yeah, and it trips you up, you know. You can, and and, and that's trying to tell you to stop because you you you're going through a lot of discomfort, a lot of well, exhaustion at times. But you've got to push it through, and you come through it. Uh, and I, I mean, all the people that are finished here have all done that, and I've done it, and I've done it many times. And and, and it's, a, I don't know, it's just a, a way you you know what's coming. The trouble is, if you're doing one of these races for the first time, you don't know what's coming. I knew what was coming before I even got here. I knew what I was going to go through, but yeah, I don't know what. Maybe I'm insane, but you know, I, I, I knew what was coming and I knew how I could cope with it. And are there some special techniques that you utilise when you're really struggling and you really feel like you're at breaking point? Yeah, um, a technique. One of my techniques, like when it's too, when it's really hot, I get into a technique of thinking cool. I try to think, right, come on, your body's, you know, just keep it calm, keep it, you know, don't panic, just keep it going, you know, and just feel it, you know, and, and, and that's a technique. And also, I think, and I know this sounds crazy, I think to myself, I can't stop, I can't fail. That's worse than this. So that technique to me is, what's beyond this is worse than what I'm going through, i.e. failing. So, you know, unless you're injured, you know, physically damaged, you know, that, but, from an exhaustion point of view, you can always push on. I've always found that. For me, um, I was I felt fairly positive, even in the long stage, the pain, um, the blisters. I was always in a semi-positive headspace. But the day after that, with the fourth stage, the heat for me, it got to a point where we were on the dunes. Mm. And I was like, I might not make this. I was wobbling around. I was looking for trees around, but there were no trees for like that were yeah. far in the distance. Yeah. And I was like, if the checkpoint doesn't come soon, I'm or the wind, I'm I might like. just pass out here. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. So there's all kinds of pain, but the the heat was something mm. that was really new to me this time round. Um, I don't know how to deal with that kind of suffering. Like the heat was, and people were still running in that heat. I slowed down to a snail's pace and it was still overbearing. Um, but I really broke through that mental hurdle and I became like, my vision went weird. Yes. And I really felt connected to the struggles of my ancestors. I was like, they went through way worse yeah, than yeah, this. Yeah. But now I feel really connected to them and it's in me as well. Mm. For me to be here alive today, the struggles of my ancestors is embedded in you, in me somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, I think I'll be honest with you that when you when you look, well, I know what you're going through because I've been through it many many times, and your body, you know, and and what you've got to do, and in this case, and you did it, you don't even know you did it because you did it subconsciously is you were struggling and thinking where are I, where can I where can I get I, can, I don't think I can get any further I don't and if I get a check I don't get I'm going to get and you just kept going and it's something that clicks in that when you think I don't you just take another steps and you're going forward and why you're going forward of course you're reaching a goal you're reaching your destination you're reaching the end of that that point so I think that's what it is subconsciously you don't know it but all that's coming into play and I believe that um, and yes the heat is horrendous and some people operate better than others of course and of course what you do as well you keep discipline going by drinking you know keep drinking keep yourself you know as much as you can in, in, in a place where you can still control it and that's why I think it is it, it, you don't even know you're doing it it, 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 you wouldn't know now. You think, so how did I do it? But actually, subconsciously, you did. Mm -hmm. You did it by not by not giving up and by pushing yourself on, because you wouldn't be sitting here talking about it otherwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, there's quite a, a popular notion that when you're when you think you're at breaking point, you're only like 40 percent there, and you have way more untapped potential. Yeah. How do you feel about that notion? Oh yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a great believer in it. I do believe that when, when you, I mean, I use it as a terminology that when you think you really are finished, 
and you can't, you know, you've got another 50 kilometers left in you. You can push on. As long as you've got water and you've got some help that I, when you get the stations to, to, to get you water and get you, you'll do it. You will do it. And I'm telling you, it, it's as simple as that. And I know it sounds crazy. But this, this is a test of, of endurance. It's a test of mental strength. And that's what you push through. Always. And it's always in there. Just a matter of dragging it out. Yeah. And how do you ensure that you can stay focused and present and out of thought? Because when I was struggling, I was really, really caught up in my head. Mm. 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 Well, let me tell you that with me personally, and I think a lot of other people, the fear of failing is more prominent in your mind than the fact that you're suffering. You don't want to fail. You want to get there. Well, everybody that started this race wants to get to the end. You know, you want to say, right, I've done it. So that failure angle takes a lot of that away. You know, I don't want to fail. And that's it. I mean, unless medically they take you out because you're collapsed and that's it, or you're injured. But if you can still keep moving, you keep going. Yeah. Do you want to perhaps mention about the charity you've been fundraising for? Yes. Yeah, I'm, 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 um, I'm doing it for a charity. I do always do these kind of races for charity. I'm doing it for a hospice near where I live, children's hospice, that is, near where I live. It's called the Alexandra Divine our children's hospice service. It's an amazing place. I went to visit it and, uh, and, and it really is. And they do an amazing, amazing work. Um, you know, something which as, as a, well, as a father myself, you know, to imagine having your child, you know, in a situation where they're, they're living their life, to, you know, close to the end. And, and these people do so much to help, not just the, fa the children, but the families as well. And I try and, and do as, you know, I'm trying, obviously, um, I'm trying to raise as much money as possible. I'd be really over the moon. If you go on to uh, Harry Hunter uh, Just Giving site, Harry Hunter Just Giving, and look for uh, Alexander Devine Children's Hospice. At the moment, I think I'm up to about 2006. I'd like to get more um, because for me, the way I look at it, one is a great charity and two, I'll put myself through through hell and I want somebody else to benefit rather than just me. I want a charity to get something out of it. Yeah. Sounds like a great cause. Um, what advice would you give for someone who's just sparked an interest in ultramarathons and, and who wants to get into the sport? Um, well, uh, first and foremost, you've got to train. You got to train. You can't. You can't just tip up and think. Well, I'll be all right. I do. A, I do. A, I do ten kilometers a week, and I go in the gym and do a few press ups and push ups and all the rest and, and sit ups. Now, now you got to train properly. You got to train properly. You got to put the miles in. You've got to get your body in shape for that. If you're coming out to a race like this, first and foremost, <clears throat> you must learn as much as you can about what pack to get, how to wear it, wear it in training, obviously, um, how to look after yourself, how to look after your feet, uh, how to um, basically uh, doing things like trekking. Because remember, in these races, a lot of trekking as well, because, you know, some of it you can't run. It's sand dunes and, 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 and jebels, and you just can't run up those. You kill yourself. So basically, you've got to get out there, put some weight on your back, and get out and do it, and put some good training in. Give yourself, if you're coming around doing a race, I would say give yourself at least nine months if you're starting from nothing, and you could do it if, you, if, you want, if your mindset is on that. Yeah. Mm. Anything further to add? How about do's and don'ts? Right, well, let's go. Do's, look at your pack, check the weight, don't carry too much food because basically, and I've said this to many people, you don't eat as much as you think you'll eat because as the day goes on, I'm sure you found this, you can't get the food into you. The exhaustion, the heat, it all has an effect. 
Uh, so you, you tend up to not eat as much. So you've got to take calories. They, the rules are 2,000 calories a day, but you've got to take calories and you've got to basically, but the more you take, the more weight you've got on your back, the harder it is. Um, and, and basically, that's very important, you know, to, 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 to get that right. And uh, I suppose the do's, well, the do's are make sure you do pick the right food, uh, the right food that you can eat, trial it. And also, like shoes, always get a size bigger, always. And then use what you try all different ways that your feet don't blister, because blistered feet really do take, you know, they cause a real drama. Um, and, uh, and make sure the kit you're wearing, you've trialled it and it's all good stuff. I mean, I'm running this race today, I'm running kit that I had or this week that I've used three times on self-supporting races. I mean, it's, it's now coming to the end, you know. It looks like, like somebody's got, got to me with, a, with, with ripping it off me. But it was comfortable, it didn't chafe, it worked. And I didn't want to go out there with new kit that I didn't know if it worked or not. I mean, obviously, I tried it before, but in these conditions. So they're the do's and don'ts, uh, really. You know, make sure you, all your gear fits, your, everything's right, your pack's right, and you, you give yourself a chance to start, you know, and, and get yourself, get yourself to give you a chance to finish. That was it, really. So um, how can someone find how to donate to the cause that you mentioned earlier? Oh, oh yeah, just go on uh, Just Giving site, Harry Hunter, Just Giving, I'm on that page, I've got a Just Giving page, and put in Alexander Divine Hospice, uh, Children's Hospice, and it, it, you should find it on there. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's probably the easiest way to find it. Um, and then hopefully um, somebody will donate. So give me some, you know, not for me personally, it's for the charity. And that's, I want them to get some, something out of it, definitely. I would be more than happy to make a donation. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything more to add or? Uh, yeah, one thing, uh, if a psychiatrist came out to these races and actually interviewed people, they'd be very busy because basically most people do these races are all you know, they're all balmy, bonkers. bonkers, and that's what it is. You know, you're bonkers, you're not normal. And of course, the other thing to remember is they reckon 1% of the population of the world at one time are doing a marathon. Here, we don't even register. It's 